Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Russell Matthews here. And yesterday we got some big news about lots of benefits as well as employment insurance being extended. There was one press conference where the Prime Minister announced this and then another press conference where the federal ministers talked more about the details of it. However, whenever there's a press conference like that and it's just in video format and it's a politician speaking, I always like to wait just a little bit to really feel like it's actually true until I can see this in actual writing released by the government. Sometimes, as we've seen in the past, the devil is in the details. Remember the whole CRB, or rather CERB, net income gross income mishap? That was all due to misunderstandings of the actual written word that described the benefit. So today is just going to be a quick video going over the actual written words that was released by the government when it comes to this benefit extension. We're going to take a closer look at it and see if there's any things that we weren't expecting based off of that press conference. And of course, before we do, if you haven't already done so, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to keep supporting Canadian content like this right here on YouTube. Okay, let's go take a look at this document. All right, so here's the written release that came directly from the Government of Canada's website. And the headline is, Government of Canada proposes... Huh. increase to number of weeks for recovery benefits and EI regular benefits to ensure continued support for Canadians who have been hardest hit. That's interesting language that they used proposes here. The way they made it seem yesterday is that at least for the CRB, CRCB, and CRSB, that they wouldn't have to go through any, uh, any difficulties in getting this to actually happen. Now, you might remember that EI, these changes, they're going to have to get this past the House of Commons before this actually becomes a reality. So as we go through this document, document, I'm going to keep an eye out to see if there's anything that sort of explains why they're using this language in relation both to the recovery benefits as well as what we'd expect, the EI benefits that are going to have to go through legislation. They say, from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of Canada has been there for Canadians and provided them with the support they need to stay healthy, safe, and solvent. Many workers and families across the country continue to face uncertain times as a result of the difficult but necessary public health measures put in place to save lives. That is why the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development, and Disability Inclusion, Carla Qualtro, today announced the government of Canada's intent to introduce regulatory and legislative amendments to increase the number of weeks of benefits available for the Canada Recovery Benefit, the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit, and the Employment Insurance Regular Benefits. Again, we're seeing language like this with intent and propose. Now, likely they're going to be able to make this happen without any challenges, but I always like to wait and see until the actual implementation of this rolls out to make sure it's something that's actually going to happen. As of right now, there's no change changes to the CRA's website in terms of the information there, so it'll be interesting to see how they actually implement this. And I want to show you two important words and explain the difference between them. It's regulatory and legislative. Now, these kind of sound like they're the same things, but they actually are quite different. When they talk about legislative amendments, that means that they're actually going to have to bring in new laws or change the existing laws to make something happen. When we talk about regulatory, this is more the implementation of the legislation right? They make the laws first and then the different governing bodies have to figure out, hey, how do we actually enforce this and how do we um, implement these laws that have been passed? Yesterday we had a live stream that went over a lot of these details and you might remember that we talked about the difference between regulatory and legislative. Uh, and Carla Qualtro said that for the CRB, CRSB, CRCB, these changes are going to be regulatory, which means that they just need to um, explain to the CRA how they actually want this implemented and enforced in order to make these changes. Uh, when it comes to the EI benefits, that's not a sure thing as of yet. They still need to work through the legislative process, like work Working through the House of Commons and, and getting royal assent for these, these changes uh, before they can actually 100% say this is happening for this EI program. Now, I have to admit that I'm not an absolute expert when it comes to this, so I'm a little bit confused why certain benefits won't have to go through the legislative process, but um, the changes to EI will. I wonder why they're able to sort of manipulate the CRB program without passing any amendments or any laws, but with EI they can't do that. If anyone has a more experience in this area and you know the answer to that question, let me know down below. I'd be interested in hearing from you. They continue, as some workers could begin to exhaust their benefits in late March, this is what we've been talking about for the past couple months, this increase would ensure continued support as Canada's economy and labor force recovers. It would also provide additional access to the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit so that Canadians do not have to make the choice between going to work sick and putting food on the table. Now, this is actually a pretty interesting change, especially when they mention the Recovery Sickness Benefit, because as I was watching those House of Commons videos 
to know what's going on so I can bring that information to you. There was a lot of talk and uh, pressure on the government to increase the ability for people to access these benefits. Now, here the government's extended them an extra two weeks or 10 working days, uh, but that doesn't really address the concerns with how long it takes to be able to apply for this and how people could still be choosing to go to work sick over receiving the sickness benefit because of the lack of timely manner in which they are able to receive the money that they could just make quickly by going to work. This is also interesting because it marks a flip of the government's policy from before to now. Before they said, hey, we already have this two weeks of sick benefit uh, and we're looking to the provinces to implement any further sick benefits that they want to for their individual citizens. But it seems that they got enough pushback from the provinces and enough pushback in the House of Commons, largely due to NDP MPs saying, hey, we need to improve this benefit. They continue here saying the proposed changes would increase the number of weeks available under the Canada Recovery Benefit CRB and the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit by 12 weeks, extending the maximum duration of the benefits through regulation from 26 weeks up to 38 weeks. Again, they emphasize regulation here. It's likely they're not going to have to change any laws in order to make this happen, which means there's not going to be an interruption in your benefits, most likely, as long as they actually implement these changes. And as a quick note about this 26 weeks up to 38 weeks, weeks. Now that's going to change the way that certain people apply. There are many people who have watched my live streams and watched my videos have said, uh, hey Russell, I've been only applying for one CRB benefit per month as opposed to the possible two so that I could stretch the benefits over the course of the entire year from September to September. Now if somebody was doing that strategy, they would leave some periods on the table that they could have otherwise claimed. So you may want to look into your strategy and which, which periods you're actually claiming now that there's this increase that's likely coming down the pipeline of uh, 38 weeks up from 26. This is also going to increase the number of weeks available under the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit through regulation from the current two weeks to four weeks, and finally increase the number of EI regular benefits available by up to 24 weeks to a maximum of 50 weeks. Wow, that's a, that's a big increase through legislation, that's a big word, through legislation, for claims that are made between September 27th, 2020 and September 25th, 2021. So again, this is just for this period. This doesn't mark a major change to the EI program going forward. That's something that the Liberal government has talked a lot about and trying to implement a, a stronger safety net for Canadians, but it seems that this is just a temporary change on that front if they can get it past the House of Commons and turned into an actual bill. Now, the fact that these EI changes are going to have to go through the House of Commons and go through the legislative process, that means that it's not 100% certain that this is actually going to happen. It's going to be dependent on the cooperation of the various political parties in the House of Commons. I'll keep you updated on that on this channel, but as we know from some previous videos, things are getting pretty heated in the House of Commons, so it's going to be interesting to watch if they're all going to come together to cooperate on this, like they did with the initial bill to pass the CRB and to make that uh, or to bring that into exist existence or are they going to push back a little bit and want to make some sort of other changes to sort of change the program the best way they see fit rather than the way the liberals want to put it through. I sort of want to emphasize the fact that for a lot of bills that go through the House of Commons there isn't this co sort of cooperation. You'll remember the Canadian government brought a new fall economic update with lots of changes including the um, uh, an increase for benefits going to people who have children in Canada. Now for for the longest time, they've been trying to pass this through the legislative process, but uh, I'll show you what Krista Freeland says here. She says, for the sake of all Canadians and hashtag Team Canada, I didn't know that was a thing, I hope the CPC headquarters and Erin O'Toole lend support to the passage of Bill C-14, which is being debated today for the sixth time. This bill contains urgent measures that are so vitally needed during the pandemic. She continues saying that this includes funding for long-term care facilities, support for low- and middle-income families, and support for COVID-19 testing and research. Support for Canadians cannot flow until this legislation passes. So there is the precedent right now in the House of Commons for these legislative processes to take a long time and to sort of be pushed back on by other parties. And it's not necessarily for bad reason or with bad reason that this is happening. The Conservatives are saying, hey, we rushed through the process of bringing the CRB to the table. You rushed that bill through through the legislative process and we had all these loopholes, we had these problems. 
let's take a second and look at this and figure out if we can make sure that this is all exactly how we want it to be. Now, whether or not it should take six different debates over the legislation is up for debate um, amongst us, the, the viewers and the people people watching this, this actually take place. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if they're going to cooperate on these EI changes when they're not even cooperating on this, uh, this economic update that came out quite a while ago. Now back to this press release about these extension, this extension announcement. They say to ensure employees in the federally regulated private sector can access the proposed additional weeks of CRCB and CRSB without the risk of losing their jobs, the maximum length of the leave related to COVID-19 under the Canada Labour Code would also be extended. Provincial and territorial governments will determine whether they need to amend their job protected leaves in order to facilitate employees' access to the proposed additional weeks of CRSB and CRCB. Certain provinces may have their own benefits, so they want to make sure sure that uh, this doesn't overlap and it allows people to access all of these programs. Subject to the legislation receiving royal assent, in addition, self-employed workers who have opted into the EI program to access special benefits would be able to use a 2020 earnings threshold of $5,000 compared to the previous threshold of $7,505. This change would be retroactive to claims established as of January 3rd, 2021 and would apply until September 25th, 2021. So this is another thing that they're going to include in the new legislation that they need to have passed in order to make these changes to EI. Now this could be a sticking point, right? Who knows which politicians are going to support these changes. It seems like they're going to lower the threshold uh, in order to be able to uh, claim these benefits in terms of earning. They're going to lower it down to 5000 which is more in line with the CRB and the CRCB, uh, down from the previous threshold of 7555 And then we have some written comments from the federal ministers that have brought this uh, to fruition. The Canadian workers can be confident that our government will always be there to support them through this pandemic. Some people might scoff at that who feel like they haven't been supported, but will continue. Regardless of where they live in Canada or who they work for, we created recovery benefits and introduced flexibilities to the EI program so that workers who needed support in this new phase of the pandemic could continue to provide for their families. By increasing the number of weeks available for these important benefits, Benefits, we are easing a big financial stress for workers and giving them the certainty that they need. And again, this is coming from the person we've talked about a lot here on the channel, Carla Qualtro. Now, this quote is from Diane Le Bouthier, the Minister of National Revenue, and she says, It's been nearly a year since Canadians first faced the challenges of adapting to life during a pandemic. Since the beginning, the Canada Revenue Agency has prioritized our work to ensure any Canadian worker who lost income due to COVID-19 would still have the means to live. Today's announcement demonstrates our commitment to that priority has not changed. Once implemented, these measures will ensure Canadians avoid further financial challenges while maintaining the health and safety of their families. Now, some people might be frustrated hearing that last quote. Again, that was from Diane Le Bouthier, and she's the federal minister who's responsible for the administration and the, and the way that the CRA is run. She's the one who's supposed to oversee that. Now, the CRA has been having lots of problems lately with long wait times and, and information not being handed out to people in a timely fashion, especially when it comes to the CRA uh, issue where many people thought their accounts had been hacked because their email addresses had been removed. Now it seems as an update to this story that this wasn't due to a hack, but rather a CRA investigation where they were able to recognize that certain email addresses were being sold on the dark web <laughs> and that people were able to buy those email addresses and password links. The CRA found out that found this out and cross reference the list to make sure that uh, none of these CRA accounts had the same password and email um, combination as these lists that are being sold on the dark web. So apparently that's what was actually going on, but they really didn't tell people that. So people were very confused. Again, that's a whole nother can of worms. And finally, there's the quick facts section. Let's see if there's anything new in here. Effective September 27th, 2020, the three temporary recovery benefits were put into place. We know this. They made these benefits. Okay, we're going to skip over that. As of February 14th, the numbers of unique applicants that have accessed the recovery benefit are, oh, this is a little bit interesting, 1,715,090 people on the CRB since the beginning of it, uh, 333,700 
760 for the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit, 392,280 for the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit, and as of February 14th for EI, 2,045,250 active EI regular benefit claimants. So this is pretty interesting. They may make it look like if you add up all these numbers, the new CRB benefits, that they outnumber the amount of people on EI, but the way they're looking at these numbers is all of the total applicants that have ever been on it, whereas the EI number here is actually how many active EI regular benefits claimants there are as of this day. So at any given time, as of right now, there are too many people, two million people on EI, whereas this is uh, sort of tracking the numbers of how many people have been on it ever. And again, here they're using some interesting language. Canadians would continue to apply for the recovery benefits through the Canada Revenue Agency and for employment insurance benefits through Service Canada. So I guess we're going to have to wait to see how long it takes for them to implement this and if there's any roadblocks for them in implementing this. But all in all, I just wanted to make sure that I was able to bring that directly written on the Canadian website information to you because you can hear so many words in a press conference and it can sort of be tricky to know what is exactly their intent of those words, right? We saw way back Bill Morneau saying that it was net or rather that it was gross income rather than net income, right? So there is a history of politicians saying the wrong things, confusing people and having it affect the future program. So I always like to wait to see these documents in actual written words so that we can go off of that. I'd say the main takeaway is the difference between regulation and legislation, right? They're saying CRB, CRSB, CRCB, we're going to change that through regulation or rather the implementation of previous legislation. Whereas EI, they're actually going to have to go through the entire legislative process to make these changes happen. We looked at uh, the, the way that there's been lots of debates going on in the House of Commons and how there hasn't been a lot of cooperation on many issues. So we'll have to keep an eye out to see if they're actually able to push this through smoothly. And again, if you haven't already done so, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. I love to make this sort of Canadian focused content for you. And if you want to tell me, hey, Russell, I love seeing this sort of stuff, make sure to hit those buttons down there. And with all of that said, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit, and I'll see you next time. channel is supported by viewers like you. Thanks channel members.